<laughs> so what's the next step that we do here? You it's no big deal, you don't have, at this stage it just becomes mathematics. Can you so cross you off the eyes? You, well, let's, yeah, we bring this guy what down here. If I said I1 R2 there equals I2 R4. So I just take that line and put it down there. What do I do next? Divide. Oh, yeah, divide. Divide. I divide I1 R1 by I2 R2. So if I'm dividing the left-hand side of that equation by I1 R2, and I want to keep an equals, I must divide the right-hand side of the equation by I1 R2. But instead of dividing by I1 R2, I'm going to divide by I2 R4, because it's equal to I1 R2, so it's the same thing. So basically, I divide the left-hand side by I1 R2, and I divide the right-hand side by I2 R4. The same thing on both sides, and now these guys cancel. These guys cancel, and I'm left with R1 over R2, R3 over R4, and it's right now that we kick back into memorizing mode. That equation you've got to use, and it'll only make sense if you can actually remember what way these resistors are arranged here. So if you rearrange these incorrectly, then this formula won't be used properly. And you might be cross, you might be dividing, and you should be multiplying and vice versa. Okay? So you've got to have R1, R2 on top, R3, R4 on the bottom. And you will be given an unknown resistor. You will be told one of those guys is unknown. Use the formula to find the right resistor. Anthony? Uh, I thought you said we don't have to derive the formula. Though. Correct. You don't have to derive any of this, but you do you have to know that bit up there. But you Correct. should know a bit about it so that you can use one properly. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and also, like I said, the reason I went through it is just because it reinforces ideas what you're interested in. It just gets you asking the questions one last time. So what we're now going to do we said this is fairly impractical to find out the resistance of an unknown resistor. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to see how we can use that theory to come up with something that's much more practical to find an unknown resistance. Obviously you could just use an ohm, an ohm meter to find an unknown resistance. This is another way of finding an unknown resistance and there are also other applications of it. Okay so far?